and welcome to the 630 Bible study here um, for the Resurrection West family um, and also for anyone else that's joining in you know Resurrection West consists of Metropolitan and uh, St. James and Ames and I'm excited to be here as your evening Bible study teacher um, we watched our pastor earlier this morning around 1030 teaching and preaching and so we're so grateful for his leadership and all that he's doing um, to make our churches wonderful. But before I begin anything, I would like to um, just give God a hand clap of praise and just say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And um, I just want to say to him how grateful I am that we are blessed, even though there have been storms going through North Carolina, Georgia, places, um, even in Ocean City that God has spared us here um, in the Baltimore region. So we are so grateful for that. Um, but let me do a word of prayer and then we will talk further about um, the process here as far as my Bible study, what I'll be doing tonight, far as what we'll be doing in the near future, and just really, really, really digging. We know that the word is life. God's word is life, and he says his word does not come back void for those who speak it, for those who live it. And so my prayer is, is that this will be a, a blessing for you tonight, but also as we prepare and deeper in the word, you and I are going to be learning together. Um, so I'm excited about that. So let us pray. Eternal and all wise Father, we, your children, give you praise. We give you praise for life, health, and strength. We give you praise for looking beyond our faults and meeting our needs. We give you praise for first loving us. We give you praise for food to eat and clothes to wear. We give you praise. And so this evening, God, we invite your presence, your Holy Spirit here in this place. And we just ask, God, that you speak through me, that the people of God may hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, even in Bible study. Here. And so God help us so that we can be prepared to be able to share with others. In the only name that saves, Jesus the Christ. Amen. amen. Once again, my name is uh, Anissa Johnson, and I'm the pastor here of, um, uh, with the Resurrection West, and I'm excited about this opportunity. I was just um, in July prior to um, this particular appointment. Um, with the Resurrection West family. I was with the um, Mount Gilead and, and was in Baltimore County. And so up towards Hanover, Pennsylvania, um, basically they were very much royal churches out in that area. And, um, and but Dr. Um, Dr. came and said, hey, would you like to be a part of um, Resurrection West and being part of helping the community here as well as learning from them. So I am deeply excited about all that God is going to do today. We are here for Bible study and I wanted to share with you, you know, the importance of Bible study and as we grow together, learning something new every day about the Lord. We know a lot about God based on our experiences, if we're honest. We know a lot about God based on the word of God, but we really know God based on our experiences and all that we've been through. Everybody here can say there was a miracle that you were blessed by, or there was a blessing that you kept asking God for and God delivered. And so a lot of times when we go through our lives and just go through our, you know, through life, we're, we're asked, you know, is it is it experiences or is it um, the word of God that you know God? Most people there would say it's because of their experiences. And I know I can say the same thing. Um, growing up in my family and growing up, um, you know, so many trials and tribulations happening, but God has been able to bless me through each and every last one of them. So I'm so grateful. Why do we have Bible study? We have Bible study so we can learn more about our about our Lord and Savior Christ. So often in life, you find people, um, especially some of the basic knowledge of the um, of being a Christian, they may forget or they don't know. And so when someone asks, they may not feel comfortable with witnessing and sharing the gospel. And so pray 
Uh, we are learning together. I know I learned some information this morning as I watched Pastor preach today and teach today, and I'm so grateful for that. And so today, I will share with you how I'm going to move forward with evening. This evening is, of course, on the book of Acts, um, and it is going to be more of an overview of the book of Acts. Um, that we could have. We may end up um, ending a little early. There's going to be some basic information and overall of just the book of Acts. Um, we're not going to dig deep into any scripture. Then after that, we do this um, overview today. We're going to look at um, the Holy Spirit. Ask me why, and you're wondering why, because I'm going to teach on the Holy Spirit over the next two Thursdays, um, just so that we can have an understanding of the pur purpose and power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts, as we know it, um, people call it the Acts of the Apostles. We know that Luke wrote it. We know that Luke wrote it, um, the gospel according to Luke, as well as the book of Acts. Um, and we know that they're supposed to be really, according to theologians, one volume. Um, however, it's now split up to two. And we know that this particular book, um, for most people, as I said before, they call it the, of the Acts of the Apostles. But then there are some theologians that actually call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And we know how important the Holy Spirit is. Um, it should be to the believers. So I will be teaching on the Holy Spirit the next two Sundays. Um, I'm sorry, the next two Thursdays. Only so that we can have a full understanding of who he is, his power, his purpose. Why is this book called the Holy Spirit? Why is the Holy Spirit so important to the book? So many people, I've had this discussion with family and and with seminary um, classmates asking, you know, what's more important to the to the non-believer? To the non-believer is it Jesus or the Holy Spirit? To the believer is it Jesus or the Holy Spirit? Okay, so we can figure out for the non-believer it's definitely Jesus because we have to get saved before we can have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, living in us, and sealing us. And so today I'm going to move forward and talk a little bit about the book of Acts, um, the Acts of the Apostles, and the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Um, so basically, we know that the Holy Spirit starts the Bible, of course, is in Genesis and well as ends in Revelation. And so we are aware of that. And so for the next two Thursdays, I will be teaching on the Holy Spirit. But I do want to take a look at two scripture focuses um, fo that, that are very important, um, that are very um I should say, are very important in the book of Acts. And so every book or every um, book in the Bible actually has one or two scriptures that people always say, you've got to know those two. And so in the book of Acts, these are the two, two um, or four scriptures that I'll be reading. And four. Um, and then also... Asian, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promise, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, and then also, but you will receive power. That's a very important scripture. But you will receive power when the, when the Spirit of the, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll and all in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So, here we go. The author, of course, as I said before, is Luke, a physician, author of the gospel according to Luke. And um, for most theologians, or for a lot of theologians, they consider the book of Acts as a sequel to Luke. And so, one of the things that about this that's very important is that Luke was not a direct eyewitness to this information. Most of this information was received by Mark and the book of Theologians as well as scholars believe that the book was well way before Matthew was written. So even though you see Matthew in the New Testament as the first book that you come upon, 
Um, most theologians believe that it was actually the book of Mark that was written. Um, about the apostles um, introducing Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And one of the things that's very important about this book as well is that it is a book about the new dispensation. And really when Jesus Christ came, he brought about a new dispensation. Dispensation is just a fancy word for order or organization or community or government. So the Old Testament Hebrew Bible, depending on who you speak with, that was under the dispensation of the law. We know that, that Moses had the law, and we know that we had the Ten Commandments. And in fact, the law scholars, there were approximately 614 laws that the children of Israel to obey or strive to obey. Because the bottom line is 614 laws, that's kind of dumb. And so we understand that unmerited favor that grace. And so we are now God's children. We are now under the dispensation of grace. Um, because and it's grace upon grace. It's him bringing the unmerited favor, right? So no matter what we do, no matter how we've done it, no matter what people talk about us, because so often they'll say, I remember when you did. I remember when you said. I remember this. I remember that. But because of God's grace and mercy, because he loves us so much, he brought us grace through Jesus Christ. And so we are forgiven. And so now we are under the dispensation of grace. No longer are we bound to the laws in the um, Old Testament. No longer. All we have to do is when we are, um, when we have sinned and fallen short, all we have to do is go back and ask God to forgive us, and then we can move on about our business. And the important thing is to repent. So we'll be talking about that as well. Um, so right now, I'm just going to recap very quickly. It's the book of, it's um, the author is Luke, um, and he is also the author of the gospel according to Luke. Most of his from the um, we are currently under the dispensation of grace which means that's an unmerited favor that we have. It was written, the book of Acts, um, around 80 or 85 CE, which means common era. So it was written basically 30 years after the life, death, and resurrection. Okay? A couple of things we need to know about this book. This book is very important because one of the things that I learned is so often, when we are reading scripture, and it's very, very important, when we are reading scripture, we need to know the audience that it was being, it was written for. In this particular case, the audience here for the book of Acts is a mixed audience, predominantly the Gentile Christians, um, possibly in the region of Syria or Antioch. Um, most of the individuals um, were not Jews, they were Gentile Christians. And so with group of individuals and as we know it was the start of um the church. and most scholars in the book of acts is when we started calling christians christians this book is spectacular because it talk about pentecost and the sending of the holy spirit. and we're going to talk about the holy spirit because the Holy Spirit is so important to believe it, as I said, and we're going to talk about it, talk about him, and we're just going to go and take a look at that. But also, it's the beginning of the church. And it is an ideal way that God would have the church to be. And to be really candid with you, I think that we have stepped away from it just a little bit, the way God has called us to be, and really a lot. So there are some things that we'll learn, and I'm quite sure as we Hudson that we've learned that's so important um, for the book of Acts. As I said, the audience is a mixed audience, um, but basically of Gentile Christians. The climate, what was happening during that time? What was happening during this time of um, the book of Acts? And so it's the early years of the church. 
There's absolutely nothing new under the sun. So whatever the church is dealing with today, the church dealt with back thousands of years. The climate, the climate was very interesting because it dealt with the difficulties of um, including Gentiles in this time. And so even though it was this book is written to the Gentiles, it was a problem because a lot of Jewish Christians also had a problem with trying to include the Gentiles. Things that we will learn further is that we have to remember that in the Old Testament slash Hebrew Bible, that book, although that testament was all about the children of Israel only, right? So even though when we read the Old Testament and we can definitely um, find scripture there that will touch our spirits, that will make our hearts sing, I me from Ames, we were talking today. And um, she was talking about how that scripture, Deuteronomy 28, I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed when I come and I go. Um, for me, it is um, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Um, but then there's so many more scriptures that we find. Of course, the Psalms. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? Um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Or the one that I really love is that I was once young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging for bread. Or the Lord is, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We all know that one. Um, and so there are scriptures in the Old Testament that we love. And 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 I bet if we were to um go through every book in the Bible in the Old Testament, we would be able to find something that we so love in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament really was about the children of the covenant that God had with the children of Israel. The New Testament is really about um, really about um, uh, the nation. It's really about the nation. It's about all of us. It's not just about the children. It's not just about um you know, those select few that we think that are special. This particular, uh, uh, the New Testament is really about everybody. Look in the book of Revelation. I love it because this is where I laugh when I white supremacists or who are hateful and angry all the time and don't like races. Um, when we talk about... Um, when they talk about, I'm sorry, one minute, I'll be right with you. When they talk about races, but in the book of Revelation, it says every tongue, everybody will be included in that day. And so really the New Testament is about all the nations, all the people where the Old Testament is uh, about the children of Israel. And so um, there were problems, as I said before, there were problems um, overall. And so my prayer is, um, my prayer is, is that um, that no matter what, um, you know, no matter what's happening, that the church is nothing new. So a lot of times people say, oh, the church, they're doing this, they're saying this, but there's absolutely nothing new under the sun. So the same problems we're struggling with today, they were struggling with also in the in the book of Acts and trying to get, you know, Gentile making them follow the same guidelines, um, you know, far as circumcision, you know, the child will be circumcised the eighth day. Um, they were trying to get the Gentile, um, the Gentile Christians to be circumcised. So there was a lot going on with the confusion. Um, the key figures in the book of Acts, um, the Holy Spirit, of course, Jesus, Paul. Paul takes on three missions. So we know that one of the key figures or the key figure definitely was definitely the the Holy Spirit. 
One of the things that I like um, that's very important is I remember there was a term during my time in seminary. And one of the questions asked was, um, what's the Christology in it, right? Christ in it, the study of Christ, Christology. Where's Christ in all this? So Christ is throughout the entire book of Acts. And so for me, the redeeming work of Christ, that is the Christology in it. Where do you see the Christology in the book of Acts? In the book of Acts, it is the redeeming And, and, and it's the sending back of the Holy Spirit, but it's the redeeming work of Christ. And this is what it's all about. And to be candid with you, this is what it's all about even with us today. We should really on the redeeming power of Jesus Christ. Because I know each one of us has a story to tell about how God saved us, about how God delivered us. Us, maybe our child. Um, I don't see West Morgan. West Morgan is a gospel singer. It's about being strung out on drugs for 15 years. And um, now when you see singing and praising God, it's so mind blowing. His parents were on TV one day talking about his transformation. And I remember his mom saying that, you know, they would get to church because his father was a pastor and they would get to church and someone would look what was in the newspaper. There was something left on the church's um, steps. It was always something. But praise be to God, God It's the anointing power of God. It is Jesus Christ that is the deliverer, is the, the redeemer. He died for our sins. And we always say, what if Jesus Christ had come down off that cross? He come down off that Think about that office. So that's what Acts is about. It is, it is about the redeeming power and work of Christ as, as Jesus Christ has given um, his apostles, that power, that anointing, and the filling of the Holy Spirit, let the world know. Initially, they were only in Jerusalem, okay? But what happened when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit empowered them to go out and say, look, not only is Jerusalem going to hear about the goodness of the Lord, but also other nations of the tribes. And so those are a couple of things that I want to talk about and I will be talking about further. And that's with the, the book of Acts. Um, but as I said before, the physician Luke is the one that wrote it. Um, this dispensation of grace, it was written around 80 to 85 CE, which is common era. The audience, predominantly Gentile Christians, um, um, is the early years of the church. We remember that it's talking about the difficulties of believers. So many rules that the Jewish um, Christians try to convince the Gentile believers to believe and do. Um, and talking some more about that because that's very important that we understand some things here that God is showing us and I want us to get this so as I'm doing this overview I'll come up with some more information with that um and as I said before the Christology the redeeming beginning to the end um the birth of the church um keep in mind that Pentecost is the 50th it's um 50 crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And um, a lot of scholars say that this was an important time because this is the time when a lot of believers to Jerusalem. 
And so, um, because every year the pilgrimage, pilgrimage would take place. And so they felt as though this was such a special time with all these different that Pentecost would take place during that time. Um, this, this also showed the beginning work of Jesus, and Acts shows the ascending, um, the ascension of Jesus Christ to heaven. And the end of his earthly ministry, right? His earthly ministry, by all accounts, most theologians agree it was probably three years. It started at the age of 30, um, but ended at 33, um, which is really interesting. So in three years, he blew the minds of everybody he came in contact with. Um, and then also, of course, we know that at the age of 12, when his mom was looking for him, he was in the synagogue preaching and teaching then. Um, we'll say his public ministry started at the age of 30. Okay. Full is in in the preaching in Rome, the world power, keeping in mind that Jerusalem was the religious, um, uh, the religious um, place of religion and spirituality, where the Roman represented the power of the world. And so it's interesting because as I was reading some information. They were saying that in the United States, that's how the United States looks at themselves. They said that they look at themselves both as Jerusalem and as the Roman power, right? Mm. So the United States appear to look at themselves as Jerusalem because they feel they're very spiritual. Well, that's debatable. But then they say that they look at themselves also as this great power, like the Roman power, which is a world power. So the Roman Empire. Acts 1 is interesting to the Jews. Okay? So Acts 1 through Acts 12 is Peter witnessing to the Jews. And his message to the Jews was, you need to repent. You need to repent. Because the Jews um, were waiting for the Messiah. Expecting this king to come in all awesome and beautiful and all this and glory and all those things. But you know that Jesus Christ is a donkey and he was, that is a recovering addict if you want a recovering addict. Or well, how do you minister to someone when you've never been a prostitute? Well, I said you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you have Jesus Christ on your side then you can witness to anybody that you want to witness to because the Holy Spirit is speaking through you. When you become a child, right? When you become a child of Jesus Christ, when you are his, when, when you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, um, you become his. And so I love this because God does not play. Because he says, look, whoever is willing, that's who I'm sending. And so Acts 1 through 12 is really about Peter witnessing to the Jews. We know Peter could preach, and we know there were times when the Holy Spirit, he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he would speak. And we understand that 3,000 people gave their souls to Christ. And so his main focus was telling the Jews, it's time to repent. And we remember what repent means. Repent means to turn around and turn from our wicked ways. There's a difference between repent and saying, I'm sorry. Right? So, so often people say, oh, I, 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 I um, ate all the eggs in the refrigerator. I'm sorry. And then they go back and do it next week and do it week after next and keep doing it. Um, but, in, but when we sin and fall short, we were to repent. That means that we are simply, we're, we're saying we are totally changing our mentality. We're totally changing what we do. And I'm sorry about it. We're not going to do it again. And, and it's painful for us to feel it or that we would have done it. So when it was called to repent, Peter was telling them, look, you all have not, you all did not realize that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. So therefore you all need to repent. And so that's what Peter was witnessing to the Jews about. 
Acts 13 through 28, right? Acts 18 through 28 was really about Paul witnessing to the Gentiles. Okay, so this is God. God is something else because let me tell you, um, he has the ability and he, and he can do all things. But I love this because it's Paul witnessing to the Gentiles. And what Paul is stressing to the Gentiles about is to believe. Jesus Christ has come. Jesus Christ has been buried. Jesus Christ resurrected with all power in his hand. Now it's time to believe. Believe that he is who he say he is. Believe that he wants us. He wants us to walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Believe that he can do all things but fail. Believe there is nothing too hard. Believe that he died for our sins and that he gave his life for us, right? So often people get into this discussion. Was it the Jews that killed Jesus or was it Pontius Pilate that killed Jesus? But Jesus says in, in the book of, in the gospel according to John, I laid down my own life. He says, I did that. I did it. And so Paul is now witnessing to the Gentiles. And remember when I shared with you that Peter witnesses to the Jews, right? And he's telling them to repent. Paul, on the other hand, is witnessing to the Gentiles. Now, what's interesting about that? Remember, Peter is a Gentile and Jews, but then Paul is a Jew that he witnesses to the Gentiles. And this is what I mean by that. This is what I mean by the wonder and awesomeness of God. That God will use anybody at any given time for his purpose to be fulfilled. We know that at one time he even had a donkey speaking for him back in the Old Testament. God will use anyone to make sure that we, that people know about how awesome he is, and, and to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, so it could be a recovering addict. It can be a, a person who's recovering from domestic violence. It could be a prostitute. It can be someone that has stolen something. It could be all these different types of people because God will use who he wants to use. But what man does is man has this thing now. You know, man is, is a little difficult because we want certain people to be blessed and certain people to be utilized, you know? So, you know, in our churches, we'll see people walk in and we're like, God, why that person here? Or how did that person get that job? Or how come that person gets to preach? Well, really, you know how I like to say this, y'all. I'm sorry. It's none of your business. <laughs> Mind your business. That's how I look at it. Let God do what he does. And so, um, we're so grateful. So as I said before, Paul was a Jew and that, he was witnessing to the Gentiles, and um, he was telling them to believe. Believe what Jesus spoke, right? So often we don't believe what the Bible says, what the Word of God says. God is asking us to believe. Um, and as I said before, the Old Testament slash the Hebrew Bible focused on the children of Israel. Um, we know that there were covenants for them. We know that they had laws. We know the children of Israel. In fact, there's a scripture in the book of, I can't think of the book right now, but it says, when you bless Israel, other nations will be blessed. Um, we know that Israel are the chosen people. We also know that the Jewish religion, and one thing that we, know, we need to say is, is that it is not only an ethnicity or nationality, but it is also a religion, all right? So if I wanted to convert to Judaism, I could, even though I was not born a Jew. I could still convert to Judaism if I wanted to. And as I said before, the New Testament really focused on um, the nation, everybody, everywhere. That's more of the overview view of the book of Acts. Um, and I think it's very important for us to know we'll read through it. We're going to go through it line by line as Pastor Hudson had been doing with the 1030 group. Um, we're going to go through it and read about it. Um, but I wanted to 
move into just a little bit as I've given you all that overview of the book of Acts, just some basic information so that we'll know who we're dealing with. We know that Luke was a physician, um, which means that in the gospel, according to Luke, it's very detailed because, you know, doctors are very detailed. And so it's a very detailed book. And so as you are reading um, the introduction information about the book of Acts, as well as the information that I've shared with you today, that way we can be prepared for what God has in store for us for the next couple chapters as we read in the book of Acts. As I said before, for me, the Holy Spirit is essential for the believer. And you can write that down and underline it. In the discussion about who is most essential for the believer, Jesus or the Holy Spirit, we know they equally are important. But the Holy Spirit's work in the believer is essential for the growth of the church and for the movement of the church. This is why Jesus Christ says, stay where you are. Don't go anywhere until the power has come. This is why he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria until the ends of the earth. So we're going to talk a little bit just about the Holy Spirit um, for the next 20 minutes um, or maybe a little shorter than that, probably the next 12, 13 minutes. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, who is he? And, and so I'm loving this because... There are some individuals that say, not who is he, but who is it, right? Because you will hear some people say, it's a it. Um, then some people will say he's a he, you know? Then there are some people that will say, and I have to research this, that back in the Old Testament, when they talked about the pneuma or the Holy Spirit, it was a female pronoun. Um, so we're going to talk about, is he a person or not? Is he just an it? No, it's an it. You know, this bottle is an it. My phone is an it. Um, is that what the Holy Spirit is? And so we will talk about that. You know, what's, what's his purpose? You know, we hear about the Holy Spirit. And I think what happens is so many people have heard so many different stories about the Holy Spirit. Um, so many people are concerned they that they they are scared about him they don't know they don't know you know do they is the holy spirit when people run around the church and 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 fall out is the holy spirit when someone stands up and can do, utilize the gift of knowledge or the gift of wisdom um we know that the holy spirit gifts are real there's the gift of healing there's the gift of um knowledge and wisdom there's that, those gifts of teaching and preaching. And I always tell people, when someone is preaching under the anointing, it's so different when someone's just preaching. People have good oratory skills, right? Right? People have good oratory skills. But it is the anointing that makes the difference in a preacher, you know? So, so someone will get up and, and, and you know, a motivational speaker. But it's the result of what happens with that anointing. So it's the filling of the Holy Spirit that makes the difference between the preacher and the motivational speaker and what their purpose mm -hmm. is. Okay, so that's oratory skills. Motivational speakers, a lot of them have oratory skills unless they're called to preach and filled by the Holy Spirit. Then it's the Holy Spirit that makes the difference. Um, let's look at the Hebrew and New Testament. Right. So in the Hebrew Bible, which is the Old Testament, you know, how did he represent himself? Right. Um, because in the Old Testament, he was not there permanently with him like he is in the believer for the New Testament. Um, in the Old Testament, you will find scripture where um, where the Holy Spirit will come upon someone to do something, to prophesy. You'll see that a lot in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit will come upon someone to prophesy or he will fall fresh on someone and they would prophesy. We're grateful for the New Testament because he lives in us and we are the temple of God and this is why we have to watch what we do and what we say. 
some of the names of the Holy Spirit, right? So um, you'll say the names of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, right? Um, the Holy Ghost, a lot of those who grew up Pentecostal and holiness will say the Holy Ghost. Um, he is the Spirit or the Comforter. Um, he is also in the Greek called the Paraclete, P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. And there's so many other uh, names for him, like the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Those are some of the main ones that I've seen, biblically speaking. And what we're going to do further is I'm giving you all an overview, but like I said, next week we're going to really get into the Word, so make sure you have your Bibles ready to really go through and, and mark up your Bibles and get ready. So the Holy Spirit... Um, remember I asked, was he a person or it? Well, according to the Bible, he's a person. And we will look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 10 through 11. And I'm going to read something to you so that you'll see why People call him a he or a person as a, a and eleven. Let's see here. Um, and it reads, Those things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. And so he says here is that the Holy Spirit, even the depths of God, for what humans know what is truly human. He searches the hearts of Christians, right? So that's something that a, a, a the Holy Spirit does. That's something that a person can that's something that a person can do. Uh, it cannot search anything, but a, a person can. So that's one thing that we notice that, that we know that according to scripture, he's a he. Um, he teaches, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, and it reads, And we speak these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual, right? He teaches. So he's teaching us about the word of God. He teaches us. Um, in Ephesians 4 and 30, he grieves. Um, and so also a couple of things that we show that he's a person. He guides us into truth. And that's out of John. That's John chapter 16. Verse 13, and it reads, um, bear with me for one moment. John chapter 16, verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. This is, this is the spirit speaking. This is what God is saying. He will glorify me and that he has the power to share with you the truth of what's happening in the world. So, and it can't do that. And then also there are a lot of things that the, the Holy Spirit does, but he convicts us of sin. So that's chapter um, 16 in the book of John and it's verse eight. He convicts us of sin. And bear with me for one moment. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. And this is Jesus Christ talking about the Holy Spirit. He's like, look, 
I am leaving you all. I've been walking with you guys for a while now, but I'm about to go back to my father where the angels are singing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We have to remember that. When Jesus Christ came to earth, Lord have mercy. He had to deal with us. People like us, I should say. Um, so, so he was being serenaded by the angels about how awesome and wonderful he really is. But he had to come here and walk amongst us. And I love it because Jesus Christ, and we're the only religion about that. That we had a thing for us. Our pain understands what we've gone through because he's experienced it. He's experienced the dislike, the pain, the discrimination, the hate. He has experienced everything that we've gone through. And so I'm so grateful for that. that we have a Savior that identify that we can identify with and that died for us but jesus christ is talking about the holy spirit he's like look when he comes he'll be able to to talk to you about, you about judgment about truth um he will be able to reveal to you what is really happening in the world and then he also talks about here actually in the book of acts chapter eight in the book of acts chapter 8 and it's actually verse 39 the spirit of truth is also a miracle came up out of the water the spirit of the lord snatched philip away the eunuch saw him no more and went away rejoicing but philip and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns he came upon in Caesarea. And what they're saying here, this is the story we know about um, the eunuch that was traveling and, and Philip saw him and he wanted to get further explanation for the word of God, what he had been reading. And so Philip was able to share that and to look for him. He was gone because the spirit of truth because the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Ghost, because he snatched him up. And so he's also a miracle worker. And for most of us, remember in the book of Acts as well, we find, uh, we find that in the book of Acts, the book of Genesis, about um, God said, let us make man in our image, the hour the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so um, the Holy Spirit is, is everything, as I said, to the believer. Um, the coming of the Holy Spirit empowers the apostles. That's the first thing that we'll talk about. Um, the power of Peter's preaching, saving souls, and communal relationships. So when we start back next week, as I said before, I am going to really talk a lot about and what does it mean? Because so often we love the Holy Spirit when he, when we see people running around and, and, and just singing and all this and stuff. But he's there really to help, as I said before, to convict us. That when we're out of order, the Holy Spirit says, uh-uh, don't do that. You know how, um, I'll, be, I'll be very transparent with you. I am not good with traffic at all. I don't <laughs> like it. It drives me loco. Ah, uh, Ife's laughing. Um, it is, <laughs> I can't stand it. And, and, and. So there are days, I'll be candid with you guys, that if I'm driving and I find myself, you know, months ago, if someone cuts me off or someone's driving too slow or someone is doing whatever, I'm like, idiot, move out the way. You should see me. It's not cute at all. Not at all. But I had asking me, what? As are dealing with a lot, even as African Americans, mm -hmm. there are so many videos out of others calling us the N word. 
And and I and I often happen. I've been called the N word once, and I just laughed and just. But you know, the, we want the Holy Spirit to even be able to convince us this is not the time to curse anybody out or say something out your mouth that's inappropriate. Remember who we represent, right? Remember that we are representing God. And so the power of the Holy Spirit is needed for the believer so that we can function in the way that God would have us to function and that the may God get the glory from our actions. Do we fall short? Absolutely. That's why we have to repent. But the bottom line is, is that we thank God so much for the person of the Holy Spirit. I actually have eight minutes left. Um, are there any questions or any comments? You know, it's muted. It's unmuted. So, you can unmute it. I think you got to push star, star six. Star try six. star six. Muted. Uh-uh, that's not. Star five. Try star five. Muted. I don't know how to. Okay. Okay. There you go. Amen. Amen. So I have unmuted the phones for everybody so that if there are any questions or anything that you would like for me to repeat, I can do that. Are there any questions? No? Okay. Is anyone there? They may not be so just wanted to share that information and to let everybody know that next week is all about um, the Holy Spirit for the next two Thursdays. I want to take the time to say thank you for allowing me to come into your homes this evening. Um, if for whatever reason I've moved fast or whatever, um, please let me know the next time I'm open to feedback so that I can make sure that I am providing you with as much information in a delivery manner that you're comfortable with. Um, so, but I enjoyed being here with you and I want to take the time to thank um, Ife and um, Pastor Hudson, of course, for helping me to set up here in his office. And I see Jennifer is here. Praise God for each one of you and God bless you.